geez, I mean, it's been it's been a long year. I'm like a year into it. I was diagnosed in, I think it was the end of April last year. Was it the, it was the end of April that I was diagnosed with it and it had been going on for like, well, years. It's been an intense year. Of, probably the most intense part of it is the anti-epileptic drugs and the seizures. It's hard to choose. <laughs> Oh, uh, the the drugs have been hard on me. I've had a difficult time with it. They're all psychotropic, which means they affect um, decision making, and you're just like my innate psychology is heavily influenced by it, and I don't like it. I don't like being on drugs. It's never been my thing, and even though these are legal and technically helpful, I don't like them. Um, so I just finished the eighth one and by saying I finished it I, I went off of it um, which has its own problems, its own string of issues. I've had um, like a couple focal seizures each day, sometimes one, sometimes a couple, which means that the seizure stays in my temporal lobe. It doesn't generalize. When it generalizes like I'll lose consciousness or um, they're, they're more difficult to recover from. And the, I think of them as smaller seizures. The smaller seizures, the, the ones that don't generalize are, um, they're doable. The problem is just the frequency at which they occur because they, they require recovery too. So if they're happening all the time, it's just hard to get my thoughts organized, just difficult to to do life because things are confusing and there's weird sensations and I need to have a seat. Um, so doing this ketogenic diet, I'm hoping to cut it, cut the seizure rate in half like it did before. I, I did it for five months from like June till, it was June the fifth month till October, right? Um, and it really worked for me. I had to stop doing the ketogenic diet because of a medication I was taking it made me lose all the sodium in my body, which like, kind of feels like you have the flu. It feels like you have the flu. Um, so you have, like, I needed to choose one, and that time I chose the medication. But now that I'm not doing the medication, I can go back onto the ketogenic diet, see how it goes for me, and apply all the other um, lifestyle changes that I've been implementing. Um, some of them are very simple. Just drinking water with sea salt, so keeping electrolytes up, um, taking magnesium chloride, um, getting a lot of sleep, and sleep before 10 p.m., and staying positive and really in firm control of my emotions, like not getting too upset, not getting too like angry, not worrying too much. Um, avoiding intense environments. I don't really go out in public much. Avoid fluorescent lighting. So those are all things that I've been doing and they're helpful. Remember that time you went to the party and the sound was bouncing off the walls? Yes. There was lighting. Yes. Smells. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can I talk to that experience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny. I mean, when you like, when you when there when you have an emote like, when you have a sensory. When you have a sensitivity, I should maybe you could say when you have a sensory sensitivity. Um, it's so easy for normal things to be overwhelming. So yeah, my friend had a birthday party, and I was so happy to be there. Um, but I walked in and the um, the music was really loud. It was bouncing off of the tile and the walls, kind of echoing, and I could already feel this kind of sense of, like, for me, a seizure begins with a loss of equilibrium. So 
I'll stop seeing the horizon clearly and um, I feel like I'm underwater or like on a boat. So as soon as I get that feeling, I think, oh, okay, I have to down, I have to downgrade whatever stimuli is here. And there were bright lights too, which was a no-no for me. I have to stay away from them. Um, so yeah, I had to leave my friend's party. Like I was there for about three minutes and I called Steve who had dropped me off. And I said, can you come back and get me? I feel kind of lousy about it. Like I feel like kind of a wimp a lot. Um, but part of it is like, you just have to look out for yourself and just know what you can handle and not handle. And it's bizarre to go out in public and just not be able to handle normal things like fluorescent lighting. It just, I can't, I can't handle it. So it, it, it induces seizures for me. I, like even when I was going to visit the neurologist and you know I went through the hospital and they had those moving carts with beeping sounds, the carts that carry people to different areas, they have this loud beeping sound which has been a problem for me before and then this flashing light <laughs> and somehow I, as I was crossing to the elevator I was stuck between three of these things, like I was crossed at the wrong time across the hallway and the, so there were three of these indoor vehicles with beeping sounds and flashing lights and it was very overwhelming and it was almost humorous because I was in this you know healing environment that was totally inhospitable to um, people such as myself yeah how so, else has it been inhospitable visiting the hospital how is the hospital how is the hospital inhospitable? <laughs> oh god. It's like a it's like going to a fast food joint, you know, to get your to get a sandwich. Um, it's just fast. It's um there's really no uh, very little exchange of like care or nurturing. Um, it's just the way it is. It's a you know, it's a business environment. Um, it's a um, pharmaceutical dispensing situation. That's really, that's really what there is to offer there. So I don't, I don't go, I don't go to see the neurologist with any kind of um, sense of being helped really um, I have the opportunity to be medicated that's my opportunity there there's there's not an opportunity necessarily for healing if you were to write your own ticket for healing what would that look like if I was gonna write my own ticket for healing um, <laughs> well right now I'd really like to look into polyvagal theory um, I've just started doing some reading on it. Um, I, the, the thing that I'm most grateful for is therapy. Um, going to see Dr. Paul, he's a psychologist that I've been seeing for a year and a half since the seizure started. Um, and he's really helped me manage manage my perspective on it and really keep up my self-respect amidst it because it, there's, a, there's a stigma for epilepsy and he's really helped me like focus on my skills, what I have to offer, um, and maintaining my self-respect even while there's aspects of my experience that are kind of in a failure zone or what I would, I would characterize as a failure zone like health-wise. What is the stigma associated with epilepsy? The stigma with epilepsy? Uh, well, it's an appropriate stigma if you, if you believe in the stigma, stigmatization of um, mental health disorders because people with epilepsy commit suicide at a much higher rate. Um, they have many more he mental health disorders. Um, there's a, I guess there's a stigma of being kind of crazy um, or out of control, which you can understand why those conclusions are are made because a, a person
person like myself loses control over their body. So there's there's a lot of like thoughts you could have about that. There's a lot of conclusions you can make about that if someone it doesn't isn't in control of their body. Um, it's very easy to fault that person for self control or um, being possessed of an evil spirit. Like I had a friend who was like, "You're you're possessed," and I was like, "I am," and I I didn't. I didn't know how to deal with that, and I, I had to go talk it out with a priest, and he was wonderful. He's like, no, <laughs> you're okay. Uh, yeah, it's a, yeah. There's a there's a there's a stigma of of being um, yeah, possessed. I think there's that, and then there's also then there's just the psychosocial stress of not being able to drive and having to avoid a lot of environments that are typical for many people. That I think is a driving force between, but I think that's a driving force uh, behind people's struggle when they are diagnosed with epilepsy. Like I read a lot on epilepsy.com and you know, people are really suffering. I mean, there's a lot of people that don't have compassionate environments. Like I'm really fortunate to be surrounded by compassionate, loving people that are cheering me on, who believe in me and who say like, you're gonna get through it, and you know it's it's a stepping it's a stepping stone, and you know your own unique life, and there's just a lot rhetoric of, in my life. And what I've learned from talking with a lot of people on epilepsy.com is that they don't have a positive story being woven for them in their own lives. Like they they get messages of like oh well you're bad or you're cursed or you're um, you're just dysfunctional. Like there's just all of these stories that get piled onto people, so. You know, they have like the, the diff I mean, just having a seizure is difficult. It's painful. It hurts. You get this really bad headache. It's like disorienting. You, where did it come from? Why is this happening? Like there's just, it's a form of chaos that is innately disturbing. So then when you pile on top of that, um, uh, unkind judgments and rudeness, uh, it just, it just adds to people's suffering. So I'm, I'm fortunate in the sense that I'm suffering from the disease of epilepsy, but I'm not suffering from, I'm not suffering too bad from the stigma of it. I mean, most people around me are pretty nice about it. Not everyone is. Um, people get weirded out a little bit. But the people who love me still love me, so I, I love that. Thank you. <laughs> what is the body symptoms? Can you be more specific? The body symptoms? Yeah, well, it's kind of, I think a good way to think of it is a spectrum. So, like sometimes when we have a cold, like, oh, we just don't feel well and things are a little off. I mean, sometimes that happens, like things are just a little bit off, like we all get a little bit off. And I know that there's some kind of disturbance happening, but it's fine, it's manageable. Um, and then there's like the other end of the spectrum where like we might get a flu or we're like completely dehydrated, we can't eat, like that sort of thing. So there's, there's seizures that go down to that spectrum too, which are like, like decimate the internal experience, just maybe like a blinding light, visions, um, a sense of like otherworldly beings um, an overwhelming sense of doom, overwhelming sense of bliss, maybe mixed together. Um, and then there's the physical aspect of losing consciousness and then like hearing this train and scraping metal and then um, this pounding headache and then that would continue for days and then there's the the body aches because it's a I guess it's like a met it's some kind of like metabolic emergency that occurs in the brain because the brain after seizure it requires more oxygen and blood flow and things get diverted from the um, our regular organs or, I mean some of our important organs so things so at the at this other end of the spectrum it's just, it's like this just overwhelming, sort of cataclysmic <laughs> event, storm. And it's, it's just not, it's not only neural, it, um, 
it's just not in the, not only in the neurons. It's um, well, I guess I n I never realized prior to having epilepsy that like after some of the more intense um, seizures that I wouldn't be able to find words. I'd have a difficulty talking. That my legs would just collapse. That my arms would be weak. There's um, it's just a cascade of symptoms. Um, what's great is that usually I recover. Um, I recover those aptitudes within like a week of the bad ones. And specifically, how can the ketogenic and going into ketosis help you? Well, the ketogenic diet was made in the 1920s specifically to treat epilepsy. Uh, there was a doctor, I think in the 1910s, he was able to treat people for epilepsy through fasting. And it, well, it's a, fasting is a very old cure for epilepsy um, since like 500 BC. So we know that that works. However, you can't live your life fasting, but the ketogenic diet mimics the effects of fasting where the body is no longer burning carbohydrates and sugars but burning fats so it's kind of, it's like a conversion that happens um, naturally when we fast and it also happens when we don't intake enough carbohydrates there's a lot of research on the efficacy of the ketogenic diet but not a lot is known on the why it works. Like even if you inject someone with ketones, it is not as neuroprotective as being in a state of ketosis. So the working model right now is that it's a, it's a metabolic function whereby um, low blood sugar, low, like, so that it's systemic, like the low blood sugar, presence of fats um, and ketones increases the action of the inhibitory neurons. So we have excitatory neurons and we have inhibitory neurons. So when someone's having a seizure, those excitatory neurons are jamming out and going strong and then the body, the brain, the inhibitory neurons, like the GABA neurons, they, they dampen that expression. So like you, if you're looking at a seizure wave on an EEG, I mean, you're seeing a really high amplitude spike, right? So if you can compress that uh, with these inhibitory neurons, then you can stop seizures. So what the ketogenic diet does is it, it emboldens the inhibitory neurons. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the last time I did it, I was eating a lot of meat. I didn't really like that. This time, I'm coming at it with a lot of like eggs, um, cheese, yogurt, vegetable fats, on greens, and cruciferous vegetables. And I feel good about that.